Hey there everybody, Woodhouse204 here, and today I'm going to be sharing my initial thoughts and feelings on Bioware's newest addition to the space opera series, Mass Effect Andromeda. Since the game has come out, you could say I've played a healthy amount of this game, and I've come to several conclusions about it. I really haven't felt this conflicted about a game in a long time, and hopefully I can do a good job to convey that to you guys, so that you can understand how this game is making me feel right now. Both very happy in parts, and keyboard smashingly angry within minutes of each other. So let's start with why I bought the game because I wanted to be part of the Mass Effect universe once again, albeit in a new galaxy this time around, as this game, Andromeda, takes place in... well, yeah. So instead of controlling Commander Shepard, this time your protagonist is either Sarah or Scott Ryder. You get to choose between a male and female avatar, hence the name change. Ryder has decided to join your daddy on a merry little trip to an unexplored part of space. The only problem with that? You have to be cryogenically frozen and be dormant on a ship for 600 years to get there, and everyone that you know will be dead by then. So no big deal. You will be shocked to learn though that when you do arrive and are thawed out, not everything is tickety-boo and your dad, who's voiced by Clancy Brown, has decided that we should go have a look what's up with the planet that we had our eye on to be our new Earth. Things then go from bad to worse, when you can't figure out how to hold your breath on an alien world, and your dad is forced to sacrifice himself to save your sorry butt. And with his supreme sacrifice, everyone is now looking at you to sort out all their problems and Shepard, get it, all your people, to a new world where they can live in harmony. That's the basics of how the game begins, and boy what a beginning. The start of this game is crap. It's really bad, the first 10 hours of this game are horrible, they make such a poor impression to anyone who wants to play this game, I would be amazed that any newcomer would stick with it. But we don't know where the fault is! Ryder could find it. He has a scanner. Quick, Ryder, use it to locate the vault. On it. I'll try to get readings on the second conduit. Hey, get on this. Not... I'll override the safety. Got it. Relay 2C. Shows damage from a temperature spike. Found it. Bad relay. Ryder, can you go reset it? There. It's reset. Thanks. Can you say overly dramatic much? You're three minutes into the game and you're being handed everybody's lives in a tutorial. Come on, there are better ways to do this. We've seen it before. I'm not the only one who's noticed these mistakes too. You don't have to follow too many people on social media to have seen all the gifts of bugs. Now Mass Effect has always had its share of bugs, but Andromeda? Boy, these new lads at EA have decided they don't want it to be outdone in any department, including jank, it would seem. And that's not all either. Apart from the scenery change, and by that I mean the single world that you visit for the first hour of the game, which has some interesting design and ideas to it, everything else that you experience in the next 9 hours has been done in a Mass Effect game before, and in most cases, better. After Ryder's first foray on Habitat 7, you were then sent to Eos, which is a desert world. 
So you're probably thinking, oh, is this going to be like Dune? Nope. It's pretty boring. You drive around on the sand world and turn on some alien technology to open a big underground mission. This strikes me as very similar to the Prophean areas of the previous Mass Effect games. Like I said, nothing that hasn't been done before. Although I will admit that the scenery in this section was very impressive. I'm playing on PC by the way, so I'm not suffering any FPS issues that have been had on consoles. So back to the Mallman mission that we opened up on EOS, we're underground, exploring this Remtech that everyone keeps referring to it as, which is bloody annoying all by itself if I'm honest. And we have found a way to turn all this stuff on. Great I'm thinking, this is a flag for a boss battle. Now, okay, the Mass Effect series hasn't had great success with boss battles. Anyone remember Mass Effect 2's Terminator made from gooey people? I'm guessing the EA team do as well, as there isn't one here. None. Nah. -uh. You turn on the machine and then have to do a Halo style runaway sequence before a bad cloud can get you. Yeah. All in all, not a great start for a game in my book. I've heard plenty of stories of people giving up by that point, and I can't say I'd blame them. I'm not even halfway through all the issues I have with this game, but it's beginning to sound like I'm just bashing on this thing, so I'll come back to those bad points later. For now, let me share with you what I think Andromeda does right. By far the most fun I've had with Mass Effect Andromeda is meeting and getting to know the Angara, the alien species that is native to this galaxy. These guys are ruled by their emotions, as Jarl, the Angara who joins your crew, is quick to point out. This means that things like not saying what you mean are foreign concepts to him, leading to some funny dialogue from your character being sarcastic. I'd rather have ice or sand through my crack than politicians. Through your crack? <laughs> Is that a real thing or a failed attempt at human slang? Buck over. It also leads to Jar being extremely emotional. When things go badly, he can't hold what he is feeling inside, causing him to have some major mood swings that would be out of character for any other species. This is good though, as it gives the Angara a definitive emotional difference to the other species from the Milky Way, especially since most of the other races act more or less just like humans who look a bit different. I, my turn was earlier. Nexus info packets leave a lot out. I am sorry. Uh, was this not sanctioned? Oh, you weaseling Adi. Nevertheless, Ryder? Most of the rest of the game revolves around the relationship between your group, the Initiative, and the Angara, and how these two forces join together to defeat the big bad, the Ket. Bioware have made it very easy to dislike the Ket. These guys just take whatever they want and don't even try to make themselves understood, which makes them a very unlikable species. There is some interesting twists even early on about the relationship between the Ket and the Angarans, and whilst I haven't quite finished the game just yet, it makes me genuinely wonder where this story is going, and makes me want to continue which I definitely wouldn't have said after the first two planets had dragged on. In fact, the only thing that had kept me going at that point was the improvements made to the gameplay, via a jetpack which is used for traversal and maneuverability in combat, and an overhaul to the powers and skill trees. Now in previous games, your avatar had to choose a particular class at the beginning of the game, and you were then shoehorned into a set of abilities for that class. Not so in Andromeda though. Here you can still select a class to begin with, but after the first hour or so you are free to choose any powers that you wish, allowing some quite frankly overpowered hybrid setups that turn you into a one man or woman army. That being said though, you need to be a one person army in this game. 
Since whilst you are open to choose whatever options you wish now, you have lost the ability to directly control the options that your team uses. You can still operate them and tell them which enemies to hit and set waypoints for them to go to, but you can no longer tell them which special powers to use in combat. Which might not seem like a big deal in most cases, it can however make your friends seem more or less like decoys for your enemies to shoot at whilst you save the day. You might even argue that that isn't much of a change from the other games in this case. It's fair to say that the part of Andromeda that I am consistently happy with is the combat. The combination of freedom of choice and manoeuvrability from your new jetpack makes shooting and evading much snappier in the game, which is good because with the story and side missions being as up and down as they are, having enjoyable combat to fall back on is a must. More on that point of the story though. Despite having 5 years to work on Andromeda since the last Mass Effect, this game feels almost skeleton like. The main story missions are treated to cutscenes and dynamic camera angles as they always have been in the series but most of the side quests and even some of the loyalty missions for each of the characters are poorly written and delivered quite badly to boot. I'm not sure if this would have affected me quite so much if it had not been for the fact that I had recently been playing The Witcher 3 for the first time. Which is widely regarded for having some of the best storytelling in video games, main story or otherwise. Last long, but it sure works fast. By comparison, the quality of writing and voice acting is very up and down in Andromeda, and can get quite cringeworthy in spots. And whilst we're on the subject of stories being poorly implemented, let's talk about the faces that we see during these cutscenes. Now I'm sure that someone at Bioware has spent a long time developing the tools for adjusting character faces to make them seem more lifelike, but dude, you screwed up. I actually prefer seeing the characters have no facial movement, which can happen due to bugs sometimes, than what is on offer here. Most human beings, like myself, look at faces all day. We train ourselves to be able to decipher moods and emotions from the slightest of ticks and glances. So making characters look like they have trouble controlling their facial muscles is not the way to go. I understand that this is the first Mass Effect game to use the Frostbite engine, and they probably wanted to show off all the cool stuff it could do, but this was way too much. It is actually at the point where I prefer looking at the alien races, as their facial cues seem much less pronounced. And this brings me onto my biggest gripe about this game, the graphics engine. Frostbite 3 is EA's newest version of its long running graphics engine and as such should have something of a foundation laid out for making the most from it for your game. And whilst I did say it was the first Mass Effect game on Frostbite, it is not Bioware's first. That honour goes to Dragon Age Inquisition. A game I couldn't finish because it seemed to go on for a million years with its never ending quests, a feature that does seem to have survived somehow into Andromeda. So I'm warning you now 100%ers. I really do wonder how Bioware managed to make a game in 2017 that can make characters look like they were from the last console generation, yet still have gorgeous looking backgrounds and settings. Mass Effect Andromeda takes great pleasure in showing you star systems, planets and suns in amazing detail, albeit over and over again in unskippable cutscenes when you jump between worlds, but nevertheless they look very good. Once you land and have to interact with the people however, especially those wonky human faces I was talking about, things go downhill fast. Which is a shame, since once again we arrive at what I consider the most important part of a Mass Effect game, its characters. If they look bad, or speak badly, or don't even look human in many cases, 
I'm talking about the humans in this case, by the way, then the game can't possibly drag you into its story and keep you interested in what it's trying to tell you. I spent a long time trying to find the compelling side story enrichment that I've come to expect from previous Mass Effect games, only to find it largely absent from this offering. Many have been citing the game's release at just before EA's yearly financial call to be a cause for the game being seemingly unfinished. Although news reports from as long ago as November last year had official reports from Bioware saying that Andromeda would be delayed again if it didn't feel like it was ready. So I'm left somewhat stumped as to why the game is as up and down as it is, and seemingly unfinished. There are parts that I really enjoy and I feel add to the Mass Effect universe, and there are definitely parts that let it down very badly. If someone asked me to recommend this game as a newcomer, I wouldn't. For veterans of the series, however, just mainline the game, the side content isn't worth your time. There is enough combat in the major parts of the game to keep you interested, and I would choose to do the missions directly involving Jal, your Angaran teammate. Everything else? Not so much. I think that's going to cover most of what I had to say about Mass Effect Andromeda. If you wish to discuss the game further, please comment down below. I'm always interested to learn how other people feel about the games that I enjoy playing. Or in this case, maybe not so much. And if you liked what I had to say and would like some other stuff, there should be some links appearing from my other videos. Or maybe you want to subscribe. That's there too. Anyway, I've been Woodhouse204. I'll see you next time. Ciao.